Rama wept. He embraced Hanuman, then held him at arm's length. I will stand straight, said Rama. I will never bow down before sorrow again. We will cross the ocean and lay siege to Lanka. The next day, the animal armies began to march. The brown and yellow monkeys went first, covering earth like a far-reaching field of grain. Behind them came Jumbovan with his dark bears and white ones, whose faces now bore war marks of vermilion. More and more apes and monkeys followed them. In three days, they began to smell the sea and then sandalwood, and then they arrived at the Malaya Hills. Monkey and apes and bears crowded onto the mountain by straight roads and side paths. They went down to the seashore between the cliffs overlooking the waves, raising clouds of dust from the slopes. At dusk, Rama took his bow and went down to the surf. Rama heard the silvery waves. Shall cross us. Rama touched a wave of the ocean with his hand. Ocean, speak to me. The night went by. The light of dawn appeared, and there was no answer. Rama stood and strung his long bow. He put an arrow on the bowstring and said to Ocean, "Fools mistake patience for weakness." The arrow flew hissing and tearing into the waters. Smoking seashells and underwater stones flew up into the air. The water whirled. Samudra, the wide-souled ocean, rose from his dark bed below and sat on the waves, looking at Rama. His dark skin was wet like a cool lapis stone. Sea water poured from his long white hair and beard. Samudra smiled. Blessed be you, Rama. What is wrong? Never was I your enemy, but only your friend. Why would you pass me by? Rama said, "For love." Indeed, said the Ocean Lord, "My heart is as large as the sky who is over me. I will help you." Listen, the monkey Nula, who is with you, is the son of Vishwakarma, and he was born with the imperfection that whatever he throws onto water will float and not sink. I will support on my surface any foundation Nala lays down. The ocean king smiled and vanished back into his own depths. Rama found Nala the monkey, and Nala said, "Did he say that? I used to just float stones for fun. Why then I'll throw out a bridge. Get everybody to help me." Nala set to work. First, the animals made stakes and lines and measuring rods and other tools. Then they collected the materials from the hills. Then they began to build a bridge that would be a hundred leagues long and ten wide on a foundation of stones and boulders and paved with grass and wood. On the day after Nala began that bridge, Ravana called his council of noblemen and said, "Bring your minds with you for once." When they had assembled, Ravana said. Hanuman, all by himself, invaded my unreachable city and will return with Rama. What must I do? A superior person will gladly take good advice before acting. Those empty-headed Rakshasa elders replied, "Yes, we agree." They said, "Majesty, you rightly rule the universe. Everything's been just fine so far. We will free the world from monkeys." And Vibhishana stood and spoke. Rama will pardon us if we return Sita. I'll have no more of that. Ravana was as angry as a liar whose word is questioned. Vibhishana said, "All the gods' animals are running loose. They are building a bridge and plan to cross the sea. You want war, but what do you know of their strength? They will never go back over that bridge," said the demon king. "I find nothing to fear from simple animals." Have you no shame to suggest surrender, King? No one else dares tell you the truth. You have no real friends left but me. You could hide in the veil of the winds and use the sun for shield and still lose to Rama. He will kill you. There's no escape. Ravana motioned with his hand. Sit down. You have finished. No, said Vibhishana. Four strong, armored Rakshasas loyal to him came forward to God, Vibhishana. Are you incapable of reason? For the second time, I warn you to give back Sita. 
You think I'll stop and change my ways, though the whole world says I'm wrong? asked Robin. Open your eyes and mend your ways, said Vibhishana. Wake up and do right. You're a slave and wrath to your master. We have surely been through all this before in other lives. Consider right and wrong. For the third and last time, give her back. Get out, said Ravana. Vishana answered, Good fortune to you. Now I go far away. Vishana left the palace with his four knights. They put on their helmets and flew across the sea, north to Rama's bridgehead. Vibhishana stood in the sky and looked here and there with his dark blue crystal eyes. He saw Hanuman and beckoned to him. Hanuman came close and Vibhishana said, I take Rama's protection. Why are you here? asked Hanuman. Ravana rejects my words. It would be the easiest thing in the world to give Sita back. But now, white monkey, I must try myself to save even a part of our race on Earth. Come on down. I'll be your friend, as you were mine. Hanuman led Vibhishana by the hand to Rama. Hanuman said, Rama, in Lanka, this prince Vibhishana saved my life from his elder brother Ravana. Vibhishana said, I will help you when I can, but I cannot fight against our people. Sugriv said, he came to spy and kill us in our sleep. Hanuman replied, must every Rakshasha choose evil just to please you? Rama said very evenly, Vibhishana's face and gestures and words are open. He has done no wrong. One must blame the blameworthy and favor the good wherever they appear. Vibhishana said, I'll be a powerful friend, Rama. I'll pay you back someday. By the fifth day of building, Numba's bridge touched Lanka Island. And early the next morning, the animals began to cross from the north, running so swiftly that the first of them began to arrive on Lanka that same afternoon. Ravana was leaning on the wall over the northern gate, leaning on his twenty arms spread side by side by side along the ramparts. He wore white robes like fame and glory, adorned with rubies red as blood, and for a long time he quietly watched the animals. He saw the broad-shouldered monkeys and scowling bears climbing uphill, carrying huge rocks and uprooted trees. He looked out at his moat and thick walls. He saw his loaded slings and fireball. And he saw the animals all looking up at him with their ancient eyes. The ancient eyes of the animals, the first friends of man in ages past. Ravana saw the golden-haired Sugriva black and brown beard Jambava, Angada with his long, fine yellow hair, pacing with his arms folded. The white monkey Hanuman come back again to Lanka, strong and gracious, and beside him Rama, king of the world whose anger is death, surrounded by animals all willing to die for him. Lakshmana walked back and forth in front of the animals, his skin like pure gold, his lips swollen with wrath. Then at the same instant, Lakshmana pointed at Lanka with his bow, and Ravana raised a mace over his head. The north gate of Lanka opened, and the youngest third of the demon army came out to attack. But the demons could not win in daylight. Beers broke their cars and killed them with their own flagpoles. Monkeys flattened them with uptorn trees and chopped them up with captured axes like firewood. At noon, Rahasta ordered a retreat and the Rakshashas poured back into Lanka and the huge northern gate snapped shut like a trap. They waited for darkness. At dusk, the war chief Prahasta and King Ravana were on the wall again and the darkness grew. On the battlefield outside, the animals built many fires to light the ground. Ravana said, Let the young warriors rest. Arm the veterans. Rahasta said, I'll go with them. I'll isolate Rama and entertain my friends with his flesh. Little flames began to come from Prahasta's mouth, licking over his lips. 
He touched his hands together and bowed his head and saluted Ravana. Ravana said, be careful. Rahasta came down from the wall and tied back his flowing hair and got in his chariot. He leaned forward and told his charioteer, take me to war. Again, the north gate opened and General Prahasta led out from Lanka the grand army of the Rakshasha. The Rakshashas laughed in anger and blew 10,000 out of tomb shells. They came onto the battlefield and charged at the monkeys and bears. The animals fled back between their fires and the demons cried, easily done. But it was a trick. In one motion, all of them together, the animals threw great stones out from behind their own lines, over their own warriors, over Prahasta, and aimed them to fall in front of the following Rakshashas. They made a roadblock, a strong stone wall that cut off Prahasta, and when demons tried to fly over it, the animals beat them back with trees and closed in behind the general's chariot. Arrows as long as chariot axles flew from Prahasta's bow. The monkeys and apes and bears gave way and drew back from Prahasta, all but Nulla, the bridge builder. Nulla alone faced Prahasta's chariot. He dodged a thousand flights of arrows and rockets that flew at him. Then he just stood still and let Prahasta shoot. Nulla stood among the falling missiles and arrows with his eyes closed, like a proud bull standing in a rainstorm. Then Nulla opened his eyes, narrow in rage. He watched every move Prahasta made. The heavy Rakshasha chariot turned and bore down on him. The noise was like peals of thunder. The ground shook. Then quicker than a twinkling of an eye, Nulla threw his weight onto one foot, and Trakuta Hill lurched off center and Prahasta's chariot overturned. The chariot splintered to bits. Prohasta's bow broke, and suddenly the demon general was standing free from the wreckage, spitting fire from his mouth and rubbing his hands together in a bad flame. Prohasta swung his mace in both hands and struck Nulla twice. Nulla pulled one of the golden wheels off the broken chariot. When Prohasta raised his arms to strike again, Nulla threw the wheel in under his guard. He struck Prohasta over the heart and drove the life out from his body. When they saw Prahasta killed that midnight, the Rakshashas went back like tall trees in a windstorm. They tore loose their hair in shame and returned leaderless to Lanka. Nulla stood wounded over Prahasta, one arm hanging broken and blood on his leg. Rama approached him carrying a torch. As Rama came near, Nulla knelt and bowed to him. Once kneeling, he was too exhausted to rise. But looking up at Rama's face, his eyes still glittered and glowed like the eyes of a cobra. The monkeys and bears carried their dead up the hillside of Trikuta and laid them in a forest. The demons also left many dead behind them, killed by the claws and teeth of animals. But to conceal his losses, Ravana from within Lanka spirited those corpses away into the sea. In the city, Ravana called his minister, Sukha, and said, One must make his own good fortune. Awaken my brother, Kumbhakarna. The giant Kumbhakarna lay stretched out on his back inside a huge one-room mansion. Sukha told the demons in the kitchen to start Kumbhakarna's breakfast. Cooks arrived driving carts full of steaming rice and vats of wine and crisp roast buffalo. And Sukha opened the great doors to let the scent of food inside. Kumbhakarna didn't stir. Sukha entered. He fought the windy push and pull of Kumbhakarna's breathing, pulling out two big brass cymbals and smashed them together by Kumbhakarna's ear. Kumbhakarna yawned. A team of 18 trained elephants ran in through the door. 
up Kumbakarna's side and chest. There they made a line and sprayed his face with cold water. Kumbakarna awoke. He sat up, opened his eyes, reached outside for a vat of wine, drank it down and sighed. Ah, it is full night. The food wagons drove in and Sukha stood quietly at a safe distance until Kumbakarna had eaten. Then he approached and said, Prince, Wanka is surrounded by Rama and his armies. Rama? Rama? asked Kumbakarna. What god is Rama? Sukha replied, Here in Lanka you alone sleep happily, knowing nothing of our fate. Rama is a man, and his warriors are monkeys and bears from across the sea. Our soldiers have been twice driven from the field, and Ravana wants you at the palace. No fear, said Kumbhakarna. Be calm. Behold the magnified evils of being awake and subject to reason. My only law is dreams. He went out the tall doorway and washed his face in a lake. By a sudden dimness in his courtroom, Ravana knew that his brother was coming. The demon king came outdoors and saw his little brother blotting out the sky and ran to meet him with ten happy smiles. Kumbhakarna asked, What have you done wrong while I slept peacefully? I'm at war with Rama because I took his wife Sita, answered Ravana. His animals have killed our warriors who were never before defeated. Give her back, said Kumbhakarna. But I am in love with her, said Ravana. A tremendous mistake. Stop yourself, said Kumbhakarna. Those are the animals of Lord Narayana. And this is the death of the Rakshashas. Why won't you make peace with them? Not for fear of all the world. Majesty, said Kumbhakarna, after you've done this thoughtless deed full of flaws and holes, then you call on me. You begun at the end and ignored the beginning. What do you know about it anyway, asked Ravana? I know forgetfulness and sleep, said Kumbhakarna. Sleep and forget her. Ravana rubbed his eyes. Yes, I am tired and spent, but I have lost myself in longing. Your entire education was a waste, said Kumbhakarna. For nothing did you read the Holy Veda and throw your heads into the fire when we lived in the high Himalaya hills? There's no greater wrong than stealing another's wife. Lord of night, what else but a harvest of misfortune could follow? Will no one tell you this except me? I will kill Vibhishana for not caring to prevent you doing this. Vibhishana did try to stop me, said Ravana. And when he failed, he went over to Rama. He was right to do that. And surely it was wrong of you to force him to go. Give back Sita. You have no gift of protection against men and animals. No, I can't, said Ravana. Help me to cure my sorrow. In my mind, I am sure of your victory. Makarna smiled. Then they must first kill me to get at you. Dear brother, have a good time. Do as you please. Be merciful while you may, and think no more of Rama. Ravana was very happy. Beckoned for his warriors and told Kumbhakarna, Do not go out alone. But 
Carta said. I want no helpers. Everyone here who has been awake and kept silent about your careless love is your fawning enemy. Let these others help you feather your conceits. But I alone will kill Rama tonight and drink his blood. Ravana felt reborn. Kumbhakarna smiled at him again and went to put on his work robe. But though he seemed in good humor, Kumbhakarna thought to himself, Dharma is the root of all good fortune. You have uprooted Dharma. The happiness of others is light for the spirit. Or would you have darkened the worlds? Then Kumbhakarna put sympathy aside. He put his heart into the stone age. He donned his armor of bronze and his helmet of gold and drank down 2,000 vats of water. From his long house, he took out his black iron spear. Kumbhakarna walked to Lanka's wall and over the western gate, the Rakshashas raised his flag. A black banner hung with crimson flowers showing the death wheel of oblivion.